I'm good. How are you? Well, all things considered, I'm doing okay. Yeah, you sound okay. You sound like you're smiling. Yeah, I'm locked in a tiny little booth in our fine control center on Christmas Eve, but uh, otherwise, I'm cheerful. You have uh, quite an incredible spirit and will and, you know, and oh, everything, you. man. It's it's incredible. I, uh, I try to keep positive. It, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I, I can only imagine how much harder it would be if... if you didn't manage to do that, um, but yeah, yeah. You're... I just had a friend of mine fall from a heart attack today. You see a lot in here, and you just kind of have to. Uh, you just have kept, you know, keep saying that's not going to be me. That's not going to be me. That's not going to be me. So yeah, old timer I know named Harvey. He's I guess he's went on the ambulance. They got it. They got his heart going again. We'll see if he's going to be all right. But uh, that's kind of my life. We you know because we have so many COVID deaths right now too. So that's been kind of rough. Yeah, I mean, I remember what you told me you know, months ago about, yeah. um, you know, the way they were handling it. And, oh, it's even worse now. I was going to say, we had, a uh, we have a, we have our wings and galleries, of course. And so the gallery right below me, uh, which is C wing is all COVID. And they've got these guys out running around using the phones, touching everything. And you know, I'm an old con. I don't ever want to take anything from anybody. You know, I don't want to make anybody else's time harder, but they're doing this on purpose. And, and the Michigan press has been covering this continuously. The delivery infecting us. And uh, they had the same problem in St. Louis. They just had a car protest in November, which was reported uh, in Black Ink, where they went out to complain because they went from six COVID cases to 670 COVID cases in two weeks because they're mixing oh us all God. together on purpose. Yeah, and they're riding out guys. They have COVID to other facilities. They're not sterilizing the vehicles or anything. They're bringing guys into this prison that have COVID from other prisons. We were the worst one in the state. We were the first one to lock down. We've had the most COVID cases, and, and uh, I don't know if we had the most deaths or not. We had a large number of deaths here. So now we're on a, another phony COVID lockdown, and the excuse is, well, there was a COVID case in your block. And my argument is, we've had 200 COVID cases in my block. How is that grounds for another lockdown? But it's just a game they play. It's, it's the minute they see some benefit to themselves, they, they just throw the word COVID out there. So yeah. it's like, hey, can I have breakfast? Oh, COVID. Oh, okay. I guess I won't be eating today. You said the word COVID. <laughs> so that's kind of how it's been going. And when you say lockdown, are, are we talking 23 hours? Are we talking the whole day? Well, I mean, what they're doing right now, in my, uh, my unit's a population unit, so it's a level two unit. Now, I, uh, I'm a good boy, so I'm at the lowest level that I can go to uh, based on my sentence. Because I have a life sentence, I can't go to a level one. So the lowest I can go is level two. But I have the lowest points you can have, which is uh, I'm scored a minus 33. Wow. So I'm in, I'm in, I guess, what you call the best place I can be in the MDOC as far as security goes. Yeah. But my particular unit is an old level four unit, so it still has the old style electronic steel doors and they look for any reason to lock us in now the other units they can't do that they're they're more modern doors you have a key you can actually open and close your door yourself oh. but i'm in an old unit and so what they do in my block is they'll say well we're, we're running showers for the covid guys and they'll lock all of us in no nobody else has to go through that so right now we're spending more than half of every day locked in ourselves for absolutely nothing then count time comes we should get out when count clears and instead, they're keeping us locked down for an extra hour for that. And then every time there's any kind of an incident, they lock us in our cells again. Now, the thing is, they can't do that in the other units. There's no reason to do it in ours. But because they can, they, they do. do. Yeah. yeah, basically, because they can shut all of our doors, they just do. And so we've been, you know, protesting. Listen, hold on a minute. Why are we being treated in other units? We haven't done anything wrong. But it's because we have these doors. Now, the really messed up part is my unit is also where they put the transgendered guys, um, guys that are being protected. Because we're at the back of the prison. And guys that have serious medical problems like I do. So I'm in there for medical reasons. I'm in this unit for medical reasons. Okay. And so now you have, you know, the ADA violations and the gender violations, everything else that goes, you know, attendant with that because our unit is being used for all the abuses. So basically we have it uh, probably the worst of anybody in the state. Me, I'm not, you know, I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm just no, trying to give you the dude, information. Dude, I mean, yeah. listen, you know, yeah. you do deserve sympathy. I know that's not why you're saying it, but I appreciate that. You, need, you need, you deserve more than sympathy. Um, decades. What doing these guys is just monstrous. I mean, they're, they're yeah. killing people in here, and it's, you know, I don't want to misuse the word conspiracy, but I'm watching it happen, and they know exactly what, staff are furious. The papers, you know, which are, we have very uh, liberal left-leaning papers in Michigan, except for the Detroit News. Even our liberal publications have been calling out our governor big time and saying, what are you doing? And, and in her defense, and I don't know, a lot of what she said isn't true, but I think it's because she's getting bad information. Yeah. So, for example, she claimed recently in Gong War News that our cells are bleached every day. Our cells are <laughs> never bleached. We don't have any bleach. 
So I don't think she just made that up. Right. I think somebody fed her that information. And right. I've got some uh, elected officials that support me, and so I've been sending them you know, the basic facts, saying, hey, let her know she's being lied to. Yep. And if you've seen the press, our, our director's been called out quite a bit, too. She's really corrupt, Heidi Washington. And our governor left her in there when she came in. Uh, our union, the MCO, Michigan Corrections Organization, the reason they supported her was in great part they thought that she would get rid of Heidi Washington. Mm. Worst director in the MDOC's history. And um, instead, she left her in, claiming at first it was temporary. And it's been two years, and she's still the director. So she's the, she's the reason for the COVID nightmare. She's probably the one feeding the bad intelligence to the governor. Yep. And now um, she was just busted for interfering with internal affairs investigations and demanding that they, they change the outcomes of their findings. And wow. uh, so if you want to look online, there's a Stephen Marshke article where he's come out and protested and said... I'm the head of internal affairs, and she's telling my agents to change their findings on internal affairs investigations. So she's just corrupt as the day is long. And that's the and kind again, of... Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no I was just say I don't know how much that's filtering back to governor. She must obviously right. see the negative press, but I don't know what else is getting to her, so... Yeah, I mean, you know, I know all of these people are surrounded by other people who then right. talk to other people and, right. um, exactly. you know, but at the same time, you know, we need to hold our elected officials accountable and, and oh, you know, absolutely. that's why we need to call her directly and tweet at her all the time and, you know, yeah. what, whatever we can. If I lived near you, I'd, you know, be at her house because, you know, yeah. like she's... We've been she, to arrange some, some kind of a, you know, a protest of sorts, nothing, you know crazy but something that would draw some attention because she, she knows what's going on with my case you know right. about the letters that she sent right right yeah yeah i mean what's, what they did basically was they created a false finding as a justification for not acting on my case so we have a statute in michigan it's a mcl 791.244 what it basically says is if you want to do a commutation then you put in a request with the parole board, and then it goes to the governor. And once there's a decision by the parole board, the governor can act or not act. And it says she's not he or she is not bound by the findings of the parole board. So we had a petition in, in front of our previous governor, uh, Rick Snyder, who was the guy that poisoned the city of Flint. There was a national controversy about that. In fact, Hannah was doing the uh, NBC story for us. She wrote the Flint water crisis article and won an Emmy for it. And um, that was our governor, Rick Snyder, billionaire, uh, the guy that sold out everybody when he, back when he owned Gateway. And um, just a horrible, money-grubbing politician. Uh, what he did at the end of his term was he let a bunch of his buddies go and some, um, a few individuals that he felt would be politically expedient for him. So what he did right. was he basically said, well, I'm going to grant some commutation to some minorities. That's going to prove that I'm not a racist yep. if I killed a bunch of black people in Flint. Same you thing know? Trump or, is doing right now also. Yeah, exactly, exactly. They all do this. They all do this. It looks like they really care, and they can say, oh, look what I did. It's, it's that same as, I've got a black friend. Right, it's, it's right. the same thing. Yeah, yeah, it's really sad. And so uh, when she came in, she knew about the case. We knew people that knew her. Our attorney general knew about the case. She was honest enough to at least admit it and say she was going to do something about it. But the governor didn't really comment. So um, a very prestigious law firm that she used to work for, Dickinson Wright, went to bat for me along with U of M. They sent a petition to her, and we got a letter from her lawyer saying, well, uh, we've interpreted the statute to read that you have to have a new finding from the parole board. <laughs> and I said, no, the statute says you have to have a finding. I just got a denial from the parole board, so you can act on that. And there's a brand new petition pending that Governor Snyder refused to act on. So I got a form letter. Well, not so much a form letter. I got an analysis from one of her attorneys. Yeah. And I wrote a response. You know, it was respectful, but I said, you're absolutely wrong in the interpretation. I've been doing this for over 30 years. It's not what the statute says. Here's what it says, and here's what it means. And I got the exact same letter from the governor, word for word, personally signed by the governor, determining that I had to wait to file a new petition. So that basically cost me, you know, almost two years. And we refiled. And then for months they claimed they didn't have it, and they couldn't find it. And then they didn't acknowledge it until we resent it again months later. University of Michigan resent the whole thing. And then the parole board refused to act. So there's a law in Michigan saying they have so long to act. They refuse to act. We had to start going to the governor saying, now your parole board won't even make a determination. Then they refused to give us the determination, claiming they had made a new rule where I could not see the finding. Hmm. Then we found out they'd sent her a bunch of fake information, claimed I had 17 misconduct charges I'd never had. So we FOIA'd that, didn't exist, just to prove to her they'd lied about that. And long story short, um, right. she still won't rule. She, right. won't, she mm. won't do anything. They'll she do whatever... Respond. Whatever it takes, making up, you know, trumped up charges, like, yeah. you know, yeah. intentionally, you know, misinterpreting in quotes something yeah. that's really yeah. clearly written. Um, yeah. 
very clearly written. And and I mean, you know, crystal clear. You can't listen to the you know the podcasts you've done. You can't read the article. You know the interview you and I did yeah. without knowing yeah. damn Thank well. You for that, by the way, of course, man. You know, yeah, that was like, wonderful. I, I thought so too. I mean, you you know you are. You know, you do such a great job, um, you know, of... You did a great job with the questions. Well, thanks. I mean, you know, yeah. it, like, not only do you tell your story in, um, you know, in a really, uh, you know, not only do you stick, you, like, you you don't just stick to facts, which in in and of itself is essential, but, you know, yeah. you tell it in a way that, like, you can't not be affected by hearing it, and you talk about you. life in prison, um, you yeah. know, how it impacts not just you, but everyone around you as well. I mean, Absolutely. I, as yeah. you, um, you know, as Paula may have told you before or something like I use your story a lot when I talk about uh, prison abolition, um, when I talk yeah. about yeah. COVID-19 behind bars, because yeah. you put it better than I can. You're living it wow. and you don't fucking you. deserve this. Well, I always want people to understand something, too. Um, uh, there's always been a mindset in the public, for the majority of the public, which is kind of like, well, screw him, he's a convict, he right. probably deserves it. Right. But this is, this is not about me. This is about the system. And the system is so broken. And just to make a, just to make a point that I often make, and I made recently with uh, Maggie Freely from um, the Obsess Network, is if you look at the thousands of people cleared by DNA, those yeah, thousands exactly. of people all lost appeal after appeal after appeal. Most of those people had 20, 30 years or more in. Yep. And that means they went through all the available stages of appeals in the state and federal courts, and they still got screwed. Then the DNA comes out and says, hey, you actually are innocent. And what you normally get is a prosecutor making the same ridiculous claim. Well, it doesn't prove they're innocent. Maybe they had a, a rap partner we didn't know about. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. You said it was a single individual, or the woman said she was raped by just one guy. And now you have even the race wrong, just as an example. <laughs> yeah, and then and, you, um, yeah. you, you know, you, I just read a recent um, study, uh, you know, that innocence shared. Um, and one in three of these exoneration cases involve police misconduct. And we That's know, exactly right. you know, the You're police right. are intentionally, you know, um, they're, they're corrupt and they're intentionally Absolutely. doing things, um, hiding Absolutely. the evidence, planting evidence, whatever it may be, right. and just get exactly. away with it. So it's this right. whole system that needs to go down. And that's what I'm working on every day. But in the meantime, you know, I want to see you out well before we see that because, you yeah, know, there's not a lot of time to waste here. Um, yeah. You know, and... Well, what people need to understand is, is they, they, I mean, I, I tell people, you know, you should, you should actually be terrified of this system because it's like a bad movie. And people will tend to watch movies and then say, well, that's just Hollywood. But you know, there's this... G. Gordon Lydia came out years ago. You know, of course, he worked for the yep. CIA. He was a yep. hit man and everything else. And he said... Don't you people realize uh, these these ideas from Hollywood? That's what's really going on. Now, yeah. I'm not talking about you know science fiction, fantasy, or magic. I'm talking yeah. about real life. Yeah. How can you think that some Hollywood producers come up with some creative idea for a movie? The CIA hasn't thought of it all day already. <laughs> well, this is what they do. Right. This is what the government does. And in my own case, uh, we have an investigator, Herb Welser, who, God love him, is actually a former homicide detective from that county, one of my best defenders, yep. who has found dozens of phony police reports and gone and found the people in the police reports who have told us this is an absolute lie i never told the officer that or better yet in like 10 cases they were never even interviewed it's just a completely fake report yep they have me meeting people and saying things <laughs> and doing things and then we find these people 20 30 years later they say wait no, hold on i was never interviewed by the police in this case what are you talking about and well, you, here's yeah. a report right here with your quotes and you weren't and, even so, there so how could you have done right. it Exactly. Yeah. And so there's, but there's no accountability. Yeah. Now, obviously, this officer has passed away. But if he was right, alive, right. this man's not going to be prosecuted. He's not, not going to be sued. Robert Cleland lied and lied and lied to the jury. And I don't mean my story and his story. I mean factual lies. Right. And, and I'm sure he got, doing... like, his family's still getting um, whatever pension, right? I mean. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so absolutely. Of course. This yeah. goes on for generations. Thing. That's exactly right. And so what happens with our appellate system, what everybody has to understand is they say the famous, oh, well, you know, if you didn't do anything wrong, you don't have to worry. That's an absolute lie. Millions of innocent people yeah. have been gunned down, murdered, framed, locked up, died in prison, died in jail, killed by corrupt cops, you name it, in this nation of ours where we keep saying, if you haven't done anything wrong, you have don't nothing worry. to worry about. Right. 
and or you you wouldn't be there if you didn't belong there. Right. And so we think the thousands of people cleared by just by DNA, not even false confessions or recantings or police corruption, just DNA alone. Those thousands of cases tell us that our appellate system fails us miserably. Unless you have insane amounts of money, you're on yeah, the Trump yeah. level, you're going to get screwed by the appellate courts because the reversal rate in this nation is approximately one tenth of one percent. Wow. The human error is, is over 20% on the average. In identification cases, it's as much as 65%. And yet there are people on death row right now, cases almost as bad as mine, who were sentenced to die. And our, our appellate court, which covers Michigan, the Sixth Circuit, which has been doing this to me for years, has said to the nation, it's okay to execute an innocent person with absolutely no evidence. If you read their opinion in my case, after I won a habeas saying that I was innocent, they came back and said... Uh, you're not innocent enough. I mean, sure, 20 witnesses and documents and polygraphs and recantations and police corruption and 100 law enforcement and prosecutors and judges support you. That's not really enough. So go die. <laughs> wow. Now, people, people will go, well, yeah, but you know, you're still alive. You're in prison, but you're still alive. Give me well, a, guess what? Yeah. The Sixth Circuit controls Ohio. It controls Tennessee. It controls Kentucky. And those are all death penalty states. Yes. So and what's happening yeah. is the Sixth Circuit is telling the death penalty states in this precedent they said in my case, go ahead and whack somebody with no frickin' evidence. And you probably already right. know. People will always say, well, there must be some evidence. And as you also now know, there is no evidence I had anything to do with this crime, an amount of evidence that I couldn't have committed this crime, an amount of evidence of the corruption that got me to this point. And our appellate court has said twice now in my habeases, after a judge ruled that I was innocent, and after they ruled that fake photos were used to frame me in a separate ruling, they said, yeah, but you can go ahead and die in prison because uh, you, haven't, you haven't done enough to prove your innocence. Right. Well, I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. If polygraphs and witnesses and corruption and recantations and perjured testimony and phony documents and fake interviews and, and absolutely fake photos, and we have the originals and the fakes, by the way, which the Sixth Circuit admitted, if that's not enough to get you off of death row, what is? Yeah, and and you yeah. know I hate to say it, and it and it terrifies me. I and I imagine it it, it it terrifies you a great deal than me because you're living this hell. Um, yeah. It is essentially a death sentence if they don't let you That's out. Exactly what it is. You've been there for three decades. Do not survive as long as me. You understand that thirty four years, right. you know, In a brutal prison system is right. a rarity. Yeah. And there are those you'll see 30 or 40 or 50 years, but when you come out, you're a mess. When I had Absolutely. the MUC, I had no health problems. Now I, I heard, I know. diseases, heart disease, lung disease. I don't smoke. I've never used drugs. I didn't do this to myself. Uh, anybody that knows me tell you I don't eat junk food. I exercise just about every single day. And I mean exercise as hard as I can, not just, you know, walking a circle around the prison track. I've done all that I can. I've litigated for years to get us a healthier diet to get access to nutritional supplementation, to get us better health care. They're killing people in these prisons across the country. And, and again, I tell people, even if you don't care about prisoners, this is literally billions and billions and billions of your tax dollars yep. being fed into this system to murder people, 95% of whom are going to get out one day with a chip on their shoulder, no education, yep. no trade, brutalized by a system they now despise, having no faith in it whatsoever. Even if they're guilty... Most of them were probably abused in some way. Yes. And that's not every case, but unfortunately, it's it's the majority of cases. And then even if you're not, even if you're guilty, you wrote some bad checks, and they decided you had to spend 10 years in prison for the heinous crime of defrauding a bank, while you're in there, you may get robbed, raped. If you're in California or Arizona or New Mexico or New York, you have to join a gang. The gangs are, are racist. They're divided by race. So you're teaching racism and forcing racism on people who may not have any racist viewpoints. But if you're white and you go into the California system, you're going to be joining a racist white gang or you're going to get raped and robbed and murdered. And if you're Hispanic in California, you're going to be joining a Hispanic gang. And if you're black, you're going to be joining a black gang. Those gangs do not mix. So you're really forcing racism on people, militant racism, for people who probably don't hold any uh, terribly racist views. The average person that comes in nowadays, you know, like uh, younger guys like you, for example, or my son, my son's absolutely doesn't have a racist bone in his body. In my day, people were still very, very racist when they got locked up. But the young kids now that are not racist, the young kids that have very liberal viewpoints and very progressive viewpoints that they go into America's prison system in most states, they're going to have to join a gang or else. And that gang is going to be divided on one of two things, locale or race. So either it's you're going to join people from a certain neighborhood or you're going to join people from a certain gang 
based on your, your racial division. And you have to now be a racist. And so if you're in the white gangs in California, you don't, you're not allowed to talk to the black prisoners unless you're doing drug deals or something. You're not allowed to talk to Hispanic prisoners. You're not allowed to talk to the Asian prisoners. It's almost like forced racism. And people have no idea what's going on. It's just, I sit back in awe that we work so hard for diversity and inclusion. Hmm. And our prison system is massively racist, not just in the way that it oppresses minorities, but the way that it literally forces racism. Yeah, for those people that have no, no hostile views against other races whatsoever, or who even fight for inclusion and diversity. Right, like, I mean, certainly the reason is because they don't care. Like That's these, exactly right. these are. They love the division. Yeah, I mean, these are criminalized people even before they committed crimes, whether it's yeah. because of race or it's because of poverty. Right. And when they're in exactly. there, you know, the you know they'll they'll ideally make some profit off of you if you you know maybe for some cheap labor. But they've sure. gotten you out of there. They don't have to worry about you anymore. You know. No. Um, no. And they'd rather spend more money on you know unlocking you up than giving you a college right. education. Oh, they took that from us years oh, ago. Oh, I know. When I came to prison, we still had that. I had Pell Grants. Yep. I went to college. I got multiple degrees. But, you know, uh, again, there's that, there's that conspiracy word. And, and I'm always careful when I try to allege a conspiracy. But if we're going to be honest, here's what a conspiracy simply is. A couple of people agreeing to do something bad that they know is wrong. I mean, it's that simple. That's yeah. what a conspiracy is. So it doesn't have to be aliens at Area 51 or who killed Marilyn Monroe or JFK. We prosecute people every day in this country for conspiracies. We, we use the RICO Act, and we say they engage in a criminal conspiracy, right. or they conspired to violate somebody's civil rights. And yet, when you accuse the government of conspiring, now you're some wacko. Yeah. You're some nut job who's off in left field. So the government can accuse you of conspiring all day long, and that's considered fine, even when there's no evidence of a conspiracy. But if you accuse them of conspiring in some way, even when you see it with your own eyes, you read the documents, you hear the words, you see the effect, you're a nut job, you're a wacko, you see conspiracies around every corner. But I watch what goes on in here. I watch them take young kids and put them at the Lapeer Correctional Facility, where I was at, also known as the Thumb Correctional Facility, and then they let older predatory prisoners have access to those kids. Now, one of my jobs was I ran the music program at Lapeer from 2012 till 2015, when I was transferred. And um, I'm sorry, 2014 when I was transferred. And what they did there was they took these young kids and they let these older kids, I'm excuse me, these older prisoners who were uh, absolutely well-known sexual predators, serve as mentors, quotation marks, to these young kids. Wow. And what do you think they did to the kids? They turned the kids out, they molested them, and the kids just, it took them years, they finally got some payment recently, kind of like the Boy Scouts lawsuit, they're getting comped right now. But what does that do for the five years that some guy was bending him over a desk? You know, destroying him psychologically, crushing him, crushing his spirit, crushing his soul. And so now he's got a little money to buy, what, he's in prison still, so he's buying snacks. So what have you done? He's got a check now. You know what he does? He buys snack foods with it, because that's all they sell in our stores, garbage. So again, <laughs> maybe the word conspiracy isn't the proper word, but we all knew what was going on. Yeah, it was intentional. We saw it. And they punished me for stopping it. Every time I stopped one of these encounters or events from taking place. I would get snitched on, you know. So it's like I would tell this guy, listen, you're not coming in here. You're not taking one of those kids in the music room because I run this music room. I'm responsible for what goes on here. Besides, you're not doing that anyways. And I would get into all kinds of hell. And because I, I have a reputation and they fear me a little bit, they would just snitch on me instead. So they'd say, well, kids do this and kids do that. And then they'd call me up front and say, what's going on? Well, so-and-so is trying to rape a kid in the music room. And you're doing nothing about it again. You know, well, we need you to just kind of stay out of that. I mean, it's, just, it's unbelievable yeah. what goes on in here. And they hate me for fighting back. They've never forgiven me. I had a public hearing on my case in 2010, and the parole board and the attorney general brought up my litigating probably yeah. 15 to 20 times. And just so everyone knows, uh, I've won almost every single case I've ever brought. So um, I'm not some frivolous litigator. I don't sue staff for petty things. I don't whine about postage stamps and peanut butter like they claimed when they <laughs> did the Prison Litigation Reform Act. My stuff has all been major stuff like medical abuses, retaliation, um, you know, various forms of discrimination, religious, and so on. Uh, I've won racial claims for prisoners, religious discrimination claims for prisoners who don't practice mainstream Christianity. And uh, you pay a price for that. And exactly. I'm litigating right now against our, for about our diet, which is atrocious. And again, the public may not care about our diet, but if, if they're taking $50 million from you for our diet and we were getting healthy food, what that was doing was making a better adjusted prisoner and, and giving you far less medical costs to deal with the prisoner. 
Then you keep the $50 million, you feed us poisonous, crappy food, the prisoners get sick, and you come back and they ask for $95 million extra. This actually happened. They asked for $95 million extra dollars because they had a massive increase in, guess what, cancer, obesity, diabetes, heart disease. I mean, are you serious? You, yeah. know, you, you made us sick and you asked for extra money, and the whole time I was complaining and saying this is going to happen. And I now have a pending suit on this. It's uh, uh, Ken Sue versus uh, the MDOC. It's in front of a wonderful judge, Gershwin Drain, and they've already spent, you know, half a million to a million dollars fighting me to keep us from getting healthy food. Right, back. even more money. Yeah. And you know, exactly. I yeah. you know, and and it is incredibly admirable also that you know you know that you are not helping your chances of you know being treated with leniency or not, no, you know, not at all. and but you're doing this on behalf of so many people. You are truly yeah. a great guy, and oh, thank you, bro. Thank I mean, you. one day we will meet in person. And I, you know, I was really, really, really hoping that this Christmas you would be home. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, now we... No mercy for the Christmas people either. And I'm not the only innocent person in here, obviously. Oh, you know? for sure. And uh, I always tell people, you know, my case is one of the worst, so I think it's it's great that it highlights all the abuses. I got a great message from Maggie just today where she said uh, she was... She's kind of like you. She's using my case as an example. And she um, said, I just shared your case with some prosecutors. And they were like, oh, my God, this is horrible. Yeah. So, but our, our governor's a former prosecutor. You know, and she worked. She actually worked for the law firm, one of the law firms that's defending me. She worked for them, and and they're a phenomenal group of people at Dickinson, right there. They really, you know, went out of their way to take a stance for me. And everyone's feeling right now is that she's she's just snubbing them all, and nobody understands. Them. I mean, really, really good people have devoted their life to the state for whatever reasons have come out and said this is a travesty of justice. This needs to be fixed. And I think, like you, a lot of people thought she, oh, for sure she's at least going to do it by Christmas. Because even if you don't care about Christmas, the whole message of the season was supposed to be goodwill towards men, yeah. a time of healing and hope, a new year coming. Yep. Now, bless her heart, she did let four people go the other day. One of them was a guy I've been tweeting for, Michael Thompson. Uh, his nickname is Meatloaf. <laughs> He's a guy that did um, about 24, 25 years on a 40 to 60 for three pounds of marijuana, My which of course is not illegal in Michigan. And, um, you know, like I said, I love the fact that she let Michael go. Um, I never backbite, and I'm not, I'm not, you know, the least bit jealous. He deserved to go home. He should not have been in prison. None of those guys that, that she let go should have been in prison. They were all drug crimes. Yep. But, you know, what about the innocence people? Yep. You know, the ones where there's no question, where, where the support is bipartisan in my case. Yep. I literally have uh, conservative support, even from our conservative paper, the Detroit News, they've called my release three times already. So I don't know what else she needs. Nobody does. We can't figure it out. I've had celebrities tweet for me. I've had phenomenal people in the press like yourself and wonderful articles, um, amazing support. I have prosecutors, judges, lawyers, law enforcement. Um, obviously, I have so many wonderful progressive and liberal organizations out there that really are fighting for social justice and reform standing by yeah. me. I don't know what else she needs. Well, I think um, she's got it all. And, since, you know, I think... You know, I hope that I talk to you next year and it's fucking finally over. In the meantime, you know, I really believe that, you know, when you mentioned a protest, like if if there's a way to organize people who are who can get to her house, you know, yeah. we, you know, it like we you know, we we did occupy Congress a few months ago where people yeah, throughout yeah, the yeah. country went to different um, Congress people's front doors and, you know, yeah. or front lawns. And a few of them came out and talked and listened and, you know, yeah, and, and, you know, I don't know how effective it was, but, you know, in Los Angeles, a bunch of friends of mine have been outside, um, Mayor Garcetti's house for months. Like, you yeah. know, and that, and yeah. things are happening in Los Angeles. Changes are being yeah. made. The D, the yeah, new finally. D, right. The new DA is incredible. Yeah. So like, yeah. You know, if people stand on her front lawn every freaking day, she's going to say, you know right. what? If all I have to do is let out this innocent person and they'll leave me right. alone, you know, now I'm yeah. going to do it because it, for me, it'll it'll make me better. You know, so I'm not going to yeah. do it for him, but I'm annoyed. Let's get this done. Yeah, this is everybody feels that this is a win win for her. I mean, she could do it one or two ways. She could do it quietly. But she made a great public statement about the other guys that she let go of the other yeah. day. She said that there's a lot more work to be done. And we were like, oh, fantastic. She's going to do some more work. 
and what's happening in my own case, we believe, is, is the political firestorm that it, the department despises me. Like I said, they're, they're so furious with me. And again, you know, I don't bring petty stuff. I've never been accused of bringing petty litigation. I've never had a case dismissed for being petty or frivolous. I bring serious stuff. I usually wait a long, long time to bring it, trying other things first, writing people, saying, hey, let's fix this. I'm getting ready to litigate this. Please do something about this. Like with the COVID thing, and they're not. Yep. It's just getting worse. Yep. And, you know, we reach out to her all the time. We've had amazing politicians reach out to her. You're going to see some in, in uh, Hannah's piece from NBC very soon. And uh, I mean, a person who was way, way, way up there in the chain has gone to her and said, this is ridiculous. This guy's innocent. Let him go. And what's troubling everybody the most, I think, is... We feel for, for us as progressives, as liberals, which she's identified herself as, this is a win-win. Come out and say this is a terrible injustice. What was done to this man, you know, was done by a different administration, yep. not by us. We don't condone it. We know about it. We've looked at it. And now we're going to make it right. Yep. And then I come out and I basically, you know, give her the praise for doing the right thing and standing up. And, and there's, you know, there we've moved forward a bit. What's happening instead is the media is going, what the hell? What are you doing? Why is he still locked up? Why aren't you acting? Why won't you talk to anybody? Why won't you even make a statement about this? And it makes it look as if there's, you know, a cover-up going on continuously. And a lot of my very connected supporters are saying, somebody is manipulating this thing. Robert Cleland is despised, even in his own party, so it can't just be Robert Cleland. There's money behind this. There's something behind this. And we don't know what it is because, again... You know, nobody's talking. Yeah. So, unfortunately, we're at that point where we need the pressure, and yet I don't want her to, you know, shut down I, because I of the hear pressure you. and get mad. Yeah. And we've gotten hints that have said things like, "We don't to be pressured into doing this." You know, well, I'm not trying to intimidate you. I don't. I don't want you. I don't want to intimidate you. I want you to feel comfortable doing the right thing. I want right. you to feel you have enormous support. Where's the backlash going right to come from? Right. The county will not talk about this case. Robert Cleland will not talk about this case. The victim's family knows he was a drug dealer. They will not talk about this case. They know why he was killed. They, they were part of the cover-up from the very beginning. We caught them lying about a hundred things. And, um, we had the interview where they said the son had never mentioned me, never said a single word about me. We now know from his friends he was being pursued. We have all the evidence of that, which the police tried to hide. We have the reports where guys were going into his workplace after him, that he knew who they were. The employees confirmed this. We have their interviews. So there, there was a cover-up in the case itself. Why she's not acting to fix that is what's troubling everybody and why she isn't just doing what she said she was going to do from the very beginning when she came in, which was take a stance for justice and reform. Where It's two years. Yeah. The prison system's worse than ever. People are dying in here. People are sick in here. We have the worst director in our history. She's been called out repeatedly. Our union demanded her removal. The head of her own internal affairs has demanded her removal. And she's still there, and everyone's kind of sitting back going, Governor, what are you doing? This is your chance. You know, the first thing Biden said he was going to do was fix a bunch of stuff first day in office. <laughs> we, kind of, we kind of thought she was going to do that. And, and whatever you say about Trump, good or bad, the one thing he did do, and we don't obviously agree with everything that he did, sure, but he came in, he started doing stuff right away. Bam, 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 bam. Right. Now, a lot of it was you know, uh, some stuff we're not happy about. But the point was, at least he kept that part of his word. And the one thing he was able to run on during this campaign was, you know, I made 65 promises. I kept 60 of them. She made 50 promises, fix the roads, fix the schools, fix the bridges, fix the justice system. You know, we're not seeing any of that. And I wish, I understand we have Republican House and Senate, but I wish she would take the power of that executive pen at least as much as she's allowed. We have a phenomenal attorney general who's going to back her legally on just about anything she does that's within the law. And I would use that power and I would just go nuts and I would just start fixing things, you know? And I think as citizens, that's what we would all do. We always wonder why yeah, these guys right. get in office. Right. You know, but and, we and don't, don't know. Do exactly that. Right. We don't know what goes you know? on behind the scenes. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. But and and Biden, you know, Biden's putting a team together. It looks like to do what he said he was going to do. I, once again, I understand we're not happy with all the choices that he's making, but you know, he said throughout this campaign, my first day in office, I'm going to do blank, 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 and blank. It looks like he's lining up a team to do a lot of what he said. Now he's already said some things like the immigration thing won't be as easy as he thought, and I thought that was kind of a far fetched promise. But at least it looks like he's lining up a team to do a lot of what he said, and he also said, kind of like Trump did. And like Obama did in later years, if I can't get it through Congress, I'll do it through executive order. And she has the power through executive order right now to completely revise the MPOC without asking anybody's permission. 
you know, and she has the power to to move some funds around and to fix a lot of other things too. And um, I think that's what we're all waiting for. And it looks like, you know, she's finally done something, at least letting those four guys go. They were all guilty and yeah. she agreed they'd all done too much time. Yeah, that's... You know, that's yeah, progress. That. It's progress in the right direction, I guess. And you know, I yeah. know, I know you'll continue to you know be the best man that you can be, and um, you know, lead by example, and try to make this place that you you know have been forced to live in is tolerable for yourself and those around you. 